In this presentation, we will take a look at new employee tax forms and the concept of a contractor versus an employee relationship. Whenever we have a new employee, the tax form typically that needs to be filled out by that employee will be a W-4. The W-4 form looks like a straightforward form. It is a straightforward form, but it is a bit more complex and it's very important uh, when recording the information for the employee to get the proper withholding. It's also a form that uh, the payroll department within a company can't really give as much uh, guidance with as uh, a lot of employees would hope because the payroll department can't typically give uh, tax advice. So even though the employer, in other words, is required to withhold the employee taxes for federal income taxes, they're not able to, to give the kind of advice that uh, would be considered tax advice because the reporting of the income taxes in terms of the 1040 is really the responsibility of the employee. So in other words, the reporting of the W-4 is going to deal with exemption amounts and how much is going to be withheld from an employee paychecks for federal income tax, their federal income tax. And then the employee, that means it's going to be related to the tax filing at the end of the year by the employee using the form 1040. So the W-4, the withholdings, and your reporting of the 1040, our employees reporting of the 1040 at the end of the year, are gonna have a relationship to each other. We also have some other important data from the W-4. So whenever uh, considering the W-4, when entering data into our payroll system, the W-4 is often the form that we're gonna use. If we're gonna enter data into our database system about a new employee, we can typically get a lot of that information from the W-4. Now the W-4 is a IRS form, it's a federal form. You're going to get it, you could find a, this copy to get a current IRS W-4 form from irs.gov. If you type in W-4, you can find a current copy of W-4 form as well as instructions for the W-4 form and see how it all fits together and how it's going to be worked out. Note, I also didn't include the worksheet that it, it will typically be here that will help with the calculation for how many exemptions we have. So I'll talk about that more in a bit. This is just gonna be the reporting form. So the W-4, when we're entering data for a new employee, this of course has the first name and middle initial, the last name. It's gonna have the social security number, which we're gonna to need to put into our database system. It's gonna have the full address, which we're gonna to need to put into our system. It's gonna have the marital status. And again, you might be thinking, well, why do I have a marital status? And that is gonna feed into the calculation for the federal income taxes. You'll note, that when you file your form 1040, which again is related to this form, that uh, you have to you have to say whether you're married or single or head of household or widowed, and that's and the reason for that, of course, is that there's different tax rates, and so when we do the withholdings, because of that complication, we have to <laughs> we have to know the marital status. So it could be single, married, or married, but without a higher sing but um, without a higher single rate. And so this is going to be an, this, the reason for this third option is the fact that when we combine incomes together, um, it, it can confuse things, of course. So if we only had one employee making income, then uh, that's usually what the tax system was first designed to do, meaning uh, most houses used to be single income houses. And therefore, uh, if you worked for a company and you were the only wage earner for that company, then we could pretty accurately calculate your uh, withholdings based on whether you're single or married uh, and that'd be it. But when you have multiple different types of, of, um, of wages that, that are going into the, to the home as well as different sources of income, then that really complicates the matter in terms of what the withholdings should be. So long story short, if we, if we select the married but with a higher single rate, we're basically saying, yeah, we're married, but we want you to withhold at the higher single rate because if we were single, we would be paying a higher tax rate than if married because we typically have double income if married and therefore lower rates. Why would we do that? Because the higher the withholdings we have, the the lower, you know, the more likely we'll get a refund at the end of the year or the more payment we'll be making towards the 1040. And if we have someone else that is working within the household, another spouse, working within the household, then we may have higher rates that we need to be uh, calculating at because our income combined will be at a higher rate. 
So, and then, and then of course we have, if your last name differs, uh, then we have the total number of allowances that we're claiming. Now this has a kind of a loose relationship to the number of exemptions you're recording on the, um, on the 1040, meaning if we're single, we have at least ourselves as an exemption. If we are married, we have ourselves and our spouse as an exemption if we're married filing joint. If we are having dependents, children, uh, for example, types of dependents, then we would have ourselves, our, our spouse, and our child or children as exemptions. Now, the allowances are not exactly the same as exemptions. Those are gonna be part of the calculation. And this would be the information if we looked at the, at the more comprehensive types of calculation for the W-4 to try to come up with uh, the, this, this number, number five, we'll take into consideration these exemptions in this calculation. But just note there's a relationship there. Why are we doing this? Why do we need this? Because we're trying to figure out based on the complex individual tax system, what the withholdings will be so that usually we want the withholdings to just barely be more <laughs> than what the tax obligation would be. Meaning, you know, the tax system is designed to hopefully try to make the employer take from the employee a little bit more than they're going to actually owe for income taxes, which they will then realize once they do their income taxes with the 1040 at the end of the year, and therefore they're going to get a refund. Why would it be set up that way? Because then the, then the government is most likely to get paid. The, mo the government's most likely to get paid by the employer doing the calculation, withholding the proper amount, withholding a little bit more than is actually going to be owed. And therefore, at the end of the time period, the IRS will give the difference back. They'd rather give the difference back than have the employee owing money at the end of the year knowing that it's much harder to collect for the IRS if the, if the individual owes money at the end of the year and the IRS would also have the money sooner rather than later. So for those couple reasons, the, the system is designed for that format. So they're, they're related and uh, this is gonna be the, the line that'll help us to get those exemptions. Now we also have this, this line additional amount, if any, you want withheld from the paycheck. Why would you want an additional amount? <laughs> withheld from the paycheck that's going to be less income or less paycheck and and the reason is that that's basically saying hey you know if we do a tax estimate with our with our tax professional um they, we might just come up with a number and say i want to add more why because possibly we have other income sources and that's going to push us into a higher tax bracket and therefore our withholdings from this w-4 will not be sufficient to pay for our taxes or um we have a spouse, which would be part of our other income, who has substantial income and therefore pushing us into a higher tax bracket and therefore the withholdings from this calculation will not be sufficient. We would need to increase it. And then we have uh, seven, I claim exemption from uh, withholding for 2008 and I certify that I meet both the following conditions. So we could try to say, you know what, I don't, I don't need withholding. You don't need to withhold from me. And you have to basically tell the employer, the employer having the responsibility to withhold needs to, needs to have a reason not to withhold. And that would be last year I had a, I had a right uh, to a refund for all federal income taxes uh, withheld because I had no tax liability. So you're basically saying, hey, last year, you know, I didn't have, didn't have any taxes. So and the IRS is going to say, well, if that's a condition, your taxes are probably pretty low. And maybe you don't have a responsibility to pay if you're under a certain threshold then you probably won't have any taxes because you won't be over the, um, the standard deduction. And if you weren't over it last year, then maybe you won't be this year. So, and the other, this year I expect uh, a refund for all federal income taxes withheld because I expect to have no tax liability. So again, if, you're, if your taxes are, if your income is under a, a certain level, under like um, under the standard deduction, then you're not gonna have any taxes typically. And you can basically claim that and you can say, okay, I don't have any withholding under that specific scenario. And then of course, uh, we need uh, the first date of employment and the employer identification number as we need on every type of payroll tax form and the employer name and address. So then we have this concept between the employee and a contractor. And this is a huge kind of concept because uh, there's pros and cons to having a contractor relationship to an employee-employer relationship. Uh, so if, we, if we're if we trying to find work, we need someone to do something for us and we're trying to hire out 
someone to do someone for us, our, our choices are to hire them as an employee or hire them as a contractor. Now, at one point in time, this relationship might not, might have been more kind of foggy than it is now, right? at least from a legal standpoint, from a reporting standpoint, we want to have a very definite line. Uh, prior to this, we might have hired someone and said, hey, we're going to pay you so much at the end of the week and it is what it is. You know, I don't care what we call you if you're an employer, <laughs> employee or a contractor. But now that, of course, as an employee, the, the employer, the company, the employer has responsibilities to do things such as withhold and other responsibilities in terms of legal responsibilities over and for their employees. More responsibilities than they would have over, say, a contractor. A contractor who, who basically is running their own business. So if someone's a contractor, uh, you're just paying them whatever they invoice you in essence. Whereas if they're an employee, then you have more legal responsibility. You have to withhold. You got to report all the all the reporting. So of course, one of the disadvantages when making this determination as to whether an employee is an employee or a contractor, uh, we often have businesses that might want to lean towards contractors sometimes, because that would mean that they're not responsible for many of the le legal responsibilities, such as. Uh, reporting, uh, withholding, and, uh, and and a lot of the other type of requirements, paying payroll taxes and, and some of that uh, stuff. That would be so it could cut costs. Now the the uh, advantages of being an employee is, of course, you have a bit more control over uh, the behavior of the of the employee, and you're able to take care of them more. In some cases, you're able to provide them with benefits, some like 401k plan, which could entice better people. To, to work there. So those are gonna be kind of like the pros and cons, some pros and cons between a contractor and employee. Now, when from an IRS standpoint, from a regulatory standpoint, uh, they're gonna have their own kind of uh, critiques of, what, of whether you're a contractor or not. Uh, one more point before we go into those, uh, if, if you're an employee, obviously you get your income reported as a W-2 income, telling the IRS that you made money as a contractor, you get your income reported typically as a 1099 if certain conditions are met, meaning you're not like the contractor isn't an employee. I mean, <laughs> the contractor isn't a company and typically earns over a certain dollar amount, which is fairly low, like five to six hundred dollars, six hundred or so dollars, then you have to 1099. And remember what a, a 1099 is to the contractor. It's similar to a W-2. You're basically telling the contractor Look, I paid you this amount this year, and uh, I'm reporting to the IRS, and therefore you really, yeah, you, know, I mean, you really ought to report it in some way on your Form 1040. If you don't, you'll probably be notified by the IRS. Now, the problem with a 1099, again, is there's no withholdings. The employer is not responsible for withholdings, and also when you're a contractor, you may have job-related expenses because you're your own business that are not going to be included on the 1099 they're going to be something you have to deduct on the 1040 in some way on the schedule c so there's more responsibility if you're a 1099 if you're a sole proprietor if you're a contractor to report your own income to report your expenses and, and make sure you get all that taken care of now from the irs's standpoint they're kind of weary of uh, of an employer reporting someone as a contractor rather than a um, rather than an employee I mean from a from a regulatory standpoint you, you may rather have someone reported as an employee from an IRS standpoint because then you can hold the bigger larger employer the bigger company most likely responsible for collecting taxes from the contractor so at, rather than having the, the smaller contractor the smaller business probably the sole proprietor, uh, responsible for reporting uh, the income and paying their own taxes. They probably rather have the larger company that they can put more restrictions on to be required to withhold the taxes. Therefore, they they want to. They probably are going to lean towards the idea that if someone's an employee, we want to make sure they're they're reported as an employee. So, what does it mean to be an employee? It comes down to uh, there's a bunch of different tests that you can you can have, but the more control the employer has over the employee's work, the behavioral control, financial control, and the relationship between the party, 
uh, if there's more control on the employer, then you would typically say, hey, that's more of a wage relationship. Meaning if you had someone like a secretary that was, or an office worker that was going in every day and you told, this is what you need to do. I need, I need this done. I need that done. It's nine to five job. You need to be here from nine to five and whatnot. Then that's a pretty high level of control. It would be pretty difficult to say if someone's working a nine to five job in a specific defined location and their jobs are being dictated on a daily basis then that's pretty much an employee. It'd be pretty difficult to argue that that one is a, that someone's a contractor. If on the other hand, we had someone that, uh, you know, needed to do a specific job like uh, paint the house or something like that, or paint the office, then that would be more likely that we'd say, hey, this is the job we need done. You know, you have your own tool, you know, and it would be the contractor's responsibility to bring their own tools, you know, decide how to get the job done, work out the dates that will get the job done. And the, and the goal there being the end goal, the getting the place painted. Now, those are two pretty pretty stark differences between a contractor and a uh, and an employee. And there's a lot of gray area as to when someone is a contractor and an employee in different industries. Uh, they could be industry specific. So there could be a lot of areas where there's debate as to whether we should be a contractor uh, or an employee. And it's important to, to make sure to go over those rules. So um, uh, we don't get in trouble on on the on uh, on on that. We don't want uh, we don't want the IRS to come back and say that someone is reported as a contractor and they should have been an employee, and then say that we need to report, you know, uh, social social security, Medicare. So it's really an, it's really an important uh, kind of distinction. The distinction between whether someone is an employee or a contractor. The employee has much more responsibility for reporting by the employer. The contractor still some responsibility to report the income given given in certain conditions, but less responsibility in terms of many other types of regulations, uh, uh, including the uh, the concept of withholding uh, the taxes for the contractor. Did very productive payroll paid off. Goodbye.